<laughs> well, it's yeah. definitely not that after my experience. So <laughs> no, it's not that. But you know, we could be accused of that by those who have not, you know, entered into the the falls of bliss here. Uh, if you want to know what pleasure is and why the meaning of it has become so uh, not necessarily perverted, but is diluted and vulgarized, okay? Uh, it's because it's been dissociated from ecstasy and bliss. And, uh, you know, ecstasy and bliss are part of the shamanic practice, and certainly there's a heavy dose of them in anything you're going to do with the Shakti cluster and with VV uh, and the wisdom goddess. And Gnosis itself can be defined as, as cognitive ecstasy. You know, when I go up to Infinity Ridge and I practice Gaian Echo Sorcery, I go into a trance state uh, with my eyes closed standing up. It's not a trance of any kind of lowering of consciousness. It's not a channeling trance. It's not a possession trance. It's actually a state of heightened awareness of deep, deep immersion in the energetic, erotic currents of the earth. And in that deep immersion, I feel tremendous uh, ecstasy. You know, the, the Gnostics were the ones uh, who knew, the Teleste of the mystery schools knew, that what you can know in ecstasy is the highest knowing. You, you know it and you're in ecstasy to know it. And the knowing of it is ecstasy. And ecstasy is ecstasy. You got to be there to know what it is. But you can't, it's not possible really or necessary to be in ecstasy all the time. And so what, this is where I'm getting back to the theme of pleasure in a, maybe in a little roundabout way here. But here we are. Uh, take the term safety. You know, we all like to be safe, don't we? I, mean, I just love to be sitting somewhere uh, on the terrace of my house in Spain. Uh, with my cats, just looking at these beautiful cats sleeping there and thinking, God, how safe they are. They're completely safe. They trust me. They know the place where they live. I feel as safe as my cats sitting here. I love to be safe. And so when you're feeling safety, you feel really good. And pleasure is like safety. It's the safety of being close to her bliss. That's pleasure. And so it's not just a thing for you or me personally. It's certainly not narcissistic and self-indulgent. But the pleasure of living, of breathing, of drinking, of eating, of friendship, of sex, of conversation, of dance, everything we do can be done in pleasure when we're in the proximity to her supreme bliss, which she always offers us. She always offers it. And, and coming into interactivity with her, there is no way to tell how much this bliss is going to teach us. And I believe, either in something I've read from you or that you spoke to, uh, when we couple that with the word love, because obviously that's um, one thing that's really prevalent right now. A lot of people are just wanting to go to that word I think for safety, um, can you share how the three of those play together and then how you have related to Gaia in this experiment in play with both pleasure, beauty, and potentially love? Yeah, pleasure, beauty, and love. Wow, that's a real triangle. That's a trinity for <laughs> a religion. Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a part of that trinity. I guess I yeah, am. <laughs> really? I'll, I'll join that religion. Okay. <laughs> he who hates all religions, you know, will happily join up that one. Well, you know, beauty, as I say, is it's it's all in this knowing, in this divine knowing, uh, and the divine knowing of the goddess, the divine knowing of what it is to be a human being and to be alive is a, is a fountainhead of beauty pleasure and love and that's also the three 
elements of the triple flame of Tantra, as I've called it in something that I wrote on Kali Rising, Tantra of Tenderness. So love, however, is a very peculiar element in that mix. And, uh, you know, I don't talk about love that often. And uh, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it now. Oh, well, what the hell? I will say something about it. Mm. Um, love is not our refuge. And love cannot be a place where we go and hide or where we get away from the brutal responsibility of facing the human condition. So excuse me, folks, if that's your recipe for love, uh, I think that it's a betrayal of our mission here, you know? Um, you know what love is to sorcerers? That's a good question. What is love to sorcerers? You know, do sorcerers love? They don't love in an ordinary sense. Uh, sorcerers understand that love is a power that permeates the entire universe. Love comes from the originator. Love is present in every, every experiment going on in every galaxy because it is the force of discovery. It's that by which we discover ourselves and we discover each other. That's love. And the funny thing about us is that we don't realize that. So we think that, you know, love is something that comes about after we discover something. For instance, uh, you meet someone and it turns out that you love them. Uh, and that seems like a perfectly natural thing in human affairs and ought to be a natural and a good thing. But what we don't understand that a sorcerer would see it in this way, the love that you feel for that person that you come to love was actually there before you met that person and brought you to them. So love is a force of discovery. And I feel now that in correction, the power of love is in a sense becoming amplified. Each time a human individual connects with the divine Sophia, makes that connection with the wisdom goddess, the power of love across the entire planet is amplified. Why? Because the chances and the odds of us discovering the truth are increased. And so I would ask people to consider thinking of love in those terms and maybe broadening their concept of it a little, taking it out of the narcissistic and personal uh, mode and even out of the so-called spiritual mode and looking at it in a more magical and transcendental way. Beautiful. Uh, Lolly, I think she might have had a question she wanted to ask. I do. I do. Along the same vein, John, um, sure. you, use, you use the word desire a lot, yeah. and I, I love that word. Um, is desire the, that pull, that longing to experience uh, all of the qualities we've just spoken of, the bliss, the ecstasy, the love, is that the force that, that moves through us to, to align us? How, how, would you, how would you explain desire? The force of alignment. The force that, of alignment. That's right. That is precisely the sorcerer's syntax. Okay. So it's felt physically through the heart and in the mind. It's a full body experience. It's full body. It yeah. can be concentrated in the heart in a terrifying manner, which you cannot distinguish pleasure from pain. But essentially it's a full body impact, the force okay. of alignment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> and, thank you, Lolly. And John, in the a, swift, a quick side note on love, as we're aligning and remembering with uh, Gaia, would you say that that love will become less compartmentalized as we've experienced it, at least in the last 2,000 years on this planet, so it won't be so... Uh, you, as you mentioned, it's not something you get to. It's actually something that if it's right there, and you experience it. And then it depends how long you want to experience that love. Yeah, it depends how how long you can handle it, how long you can handle that intensity. Uh, one of the things that I went through. I mean, it's hilarious. I mean, I, I have to laugh now. I, uh, I, as you know, looking back on it, I have to laugh. Going through it was was you know was fantastically pleasurable 
but it was also in a way like too outrageous to be true you know what i went through in 2008 was uh an explosion of this awareness of love and of my capacity to love mm -hmm. and i have to say i've told this story before you know it's the emma story you can find it on Kali Rising, find it in certain passages on, on metahistory.org. And I want to say that, you know, I am not a person. I've never written about myself. I've never talked about myself through my whole career. I'm not a person who's given to public disclosure of personal events in my life. But simultaneous with my Turton experience of receiving the term of Guy Awakening was a love experience and the most essential thing I can say about that experience was that I realized that I that I underwent an explosion a supernova of my ability to love on the specific occasion of having my love refused it was when I had my love refused by someone that I happened to love at that moment in a very particular way, in a way that I had not previously loved a woman, and I've loved a few in my life, and men as well. But when I came into that experience of love for that female individual, and my love was refused, the result of that was an explosion of my power to love like I could never imagine. And at that point, I saw what you just said, and you said it very, very well. I saw that my power to love is, first of all, absolutely indefeatable, inexhaustible, and that it goes everywhere all the time. And that... I began to, I used to talk to people at that time, and most of them don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to talk to the few people who would listen to me and who could stand to be around me <laughs> at that time and say, uh, listen, you know, Tantra, this is it. I'm into Tantra. This is Tantra. How does a Tantric love? How does a Tantric love? Instantly, outrageously, and with the greatest pleasure and audacity that you could possibly imagine. It's like love isn't something that develops when you get to this stage, my friends. It doesn't develop. There is no development of it. It manifests itself full-blown and outrageous from the very get-go. Mm. Just as you indicated in, in what you, you said, uh, it, all, it, it, it explodes right between you and whoever's whoever's the closest person around <laughs> and then it's just a question of how you handle it and mm. can you can you handle it you know and mm. that's a beautiful thing about love uh that i think we're going to get to i would like it so much if we got to that because it's such an absolute trust in the power of love and that it is so right, and that it is the most powerful expression of our nature, and it is absolutely spontaneous and without limit. Definitely. So, uh, to change the subject just slightly from this intoxicating one to <laughs> samsara and the confines of a little bit of passed down religious text. Mm -hmm. I, I got captivated by a line you noted within this experiment that samsara and this enlightenment have the same look. And mm -hmm. if you you can relate 